copper just might be a theme emerging in this evening's program. Celebrating BC's rich mining history, precious metals are only half the story. BC Beauty and Beyond tonight goes deep into the Britannia mine and deep underwater to explore how sound bouncing back after decades of industrial contamination. Today, BC Beauty and Beyond takes you to Britannia Beach, the site of what was at one time the largest copper mine in the British Empire. It might seem an odd place to find beauty, but this is definitely a trip worth taking. And we don't have to go too far. It's right here on the Lower Mainland, just 60 kilometers north of Vancouver on Highway 99. The mine is a designated National Historic Site, and after a nearly $15 million upgrade, the museum tells a fascinating tale of the community's fortunes both good and bad, over the past century. Any adventure that requires a hard hat must be a good one, and the newly renamed Britannia Mine Museum doesn't disappoint. For visitors here, a trip underground is a trip back in time. Now this is our copper ore, because in the mountain you don't find copper in its pure form, you do have to find it in the ore form. So we'll go ahead and get started. From the time it opened in 1904 to its closure in 1974, miners pulled 1.3 billion pounds of copper out of these tunnels. This was used as a haulage tunnel driven in 1912. It was dirty and dangerous work, and in the early days, it was also very loud. The compressed air drills pulverized rock, and in the days before protection, they shattered eardrums. During peak production, they went through 2,000 drill bits a day. The hardship underground helped the mine prosper, and throughout its life cycle, the Britannia mine provided jobs for some 60,000 people. It survived wild fluctuations in the price of copper and helped build BC's resource-based economy. It was looked to as, as a place to provide copper to the Allied effort. Um, it, can, it funded and contributed to many, many men and women's working lives. And then the copper that came from this mine went around the world. It's an industrial place that built province and country. The town survived a series of natural disasters, including a mudslide in 1921 that wiped out several homes. Dozens of workers and their families died. But each time, the mining company rebuilt, and the community carried on. Everything in the town site, the homes, the grocery store, even the community swimming pool, was owned and operated by the company. This is my dad in the uh, hoist room. Francis McKilligan was born here in 1938 and basically grew up in the pool. I lived right opposite the swimming pool, so I... She's still a competitive swimmer today. Both her parents worked at the mine, and she remembers it was a tough but close-knit community. Teddy was his first name, Pat Knight, Alice Anderson. We all knew each other, and every single one of the families looked out for other families. You have this upbringing that no one can take away and it was definitely a sense of community but while the mine sustained one community it devastated another and evidence of its poisonous past is obvious on our underground tour this is an example of the acidity of the water that exists in the mine it ate right through this plate the mine runoff has an acidity equal to Coca-Cola, and it easily eats through metal. For a century, the corrosive water, laden with heavy metals, flowed freely into Howe Sound. It killed every living creature in the marine environment along a two-kilometer stretch of shoreline. Not even algae would grow in this toxic environment. The water was crystal clear, but dead. And that continued until 2004, when the B.C. government stepped in and hired EPCOR to clean up. Yeah, it's probably the best project of my career so far. It's a huge point of pride to be able to... All of the contaminated the water from the mine is scrubbed here at the EPCOR filtration plant just up the hill from Britannia Beach. 
Yeah, so right now we're flowing about 13 million liters a day. Using basic chemistry and relatively simple engineering, Epcor takes the corrosive mix and makes it much more fish friendly. It's really just adding lime to neutralize the acid. Uh, that also helps take out the metals. Uh, we add a bit of polymer to help it settle out, and that's really the process. Gravity takes care of the rest. The sludge is eventually pumped up to this filter press, and great pressure is applied, about 3,500 pounds per square inch. More water pressure is applied, and eventually it's squeezed between these layers. And what comes out is what they call filter cake. This is a perfect example here. This is where all the bad stuff is, mostly copper and zinc and trace amounts of other metals, about 650 kilograms a day, enough copper for 85,000 pennies. Christian and his team are slowly helping erase the impact of 100 years of environmental abuse. It was very fulfilling after working on the project for a year and a half to be able to go down three weeks after the plant started up and see that life was already starting to come back on the, the marine environment there. Today, rockweed is growing in abundance, providing a fertile environment for tiny creatures at the bottom of the food chain. But to see real evidence of recovery, we have to go deeper. Dr. Chris Harvey Clark is a marine biologist who's been diving in Howe Sound for more than 30 years, but never here at Britannia Beach. And then you have just under 23,000 PSI, which is... Together with dive master Royce Jackson, we're getting our first look at nature's comeback near the mine. I think it uh, could be nothing or it could be quite abundant. Be interesting to see. We descend through a murky mixture of fresh and salt water, and almost immediately it's apparent that marine life is regaining a foothold in what was once a very hostile environment. Oh, we saw, you know, the echinoderms, the starfish family, so they're well represented here. Uh, three or four different species, the giant pycnopodia, the guys that'll eat anything they can catch, uh, the smaller uh, common sea star, uh, the um, sea cucumbers. Uh, crabs, two species of crab, Dungeness and red rock crabs, um, and certainly bottom uh, fish like, uh, like the uh, flounder uh, we found here as well. So uh, there are a variety of species here. It's encouraging, considering only six years ago this water was too poisonous to support a single living organism. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised at seeing the variety we saw. So uh, some good signs that uh, some of the uh, toxic materials that used to be coming into this uh, area aren't here anymore. Time and nature, you know, heal all things. The appearance of even larger marine mammals in the area is further proof. Seen a gray whale come up here recently. There's been a pod of dolphins up here recently. I mean, obviously something's happening up here biologically because all those are animals that require a fair bit of groceries. The continuing recovery of Howe Sound is another chapter in the history of the Britannia Mine. The whole story laid out at the newly refurbished museum just across the highway from our dive. And the massive mill building may be the best billboard for all the improvements. I like to say this building rocked and rolled. If we, when it was quiet, there was something wrong. So it crushed rock 24-7. Boulders went in at the top, and concentrated ore came out in powdered form at the bottom. Local volunteers helped refurbish the more than 15,000 window panes. And Francis is one of the donors who made it happen. I'm really pleased to see it. I'm glad that it's not a place that you drive by. And it makes me really proud that this is a museum, that children are learning about mining here, and that there is ongoing progress. The museum highlights our often overlooked connection to mining. And after the $15 million renovation, museum operators are hoping to double the number of visitors to 70,000 a year. Perfect. Oh, look, look at that, will you? That one is. That's got to be a flake right there, that isn't it? That is right there. More tourists and their money, making it feel like another gold rush. The Britannia Mine Museum will celebrate its grand reopening September 18th, although the mine is open right now. And if you'd like to see an unusual piece of mine history that you won't get on the tour, check our web extra online at globaltvbc.com and click on the BC Beauty and Beyond button. You'll also find all six of the stories from our series posted there. If you missed any, or would like to see them again. And a special thanks to everybody who helped us 
produce the series.